Hi guys, welcome to my corner of the sewing room in my basement. This is my baby lock unity that I inherited from my mother-in-law. Cutting rulers. The old desk that I used to have for my quantum stylus. It was a singer. And here's a bunch of my thread. It's not real organized. It's kind of organized. There's a bias maker that I've never used. <laughs> Over here is my design wall. We took that purple insulation that you put on the outside of houses and I covered it with gray flannel. There's a couple blocks that I was designing. Those are kind of like a one block wonder design. And right here is my ironing station. My husband, we got this thing. I, I don't remember where we got this thing, but I refurnished the top. My husband stabilized it because it was really wobbly and painted it for me. And, and I put little baskets in there. And then this is my iron that I use. It's this is from the what 40s it's a tailor iron it's not the cleanest i should clean it it is uh, like a shape of a football it gets up to uh 500 degrees 550 degrees no steam and here's my pin cushion that i made this is a velcro so i can take this part off and take it to my cutting table if i want and then a little basket that goes with it anyways we're gonna make a cathedral window quilt today I'm revisiting the original video that I did. I only showed how to make the blocks, but I'm going to actually show you how to make the block again. And then I've got all my colors right here to go into the, the centers. This is going to be for a little girl. So let me go get my tripod and get that set up and we will get started. Okay. So for tools, I've got a stiletto and a seam ripper. I've got another stiletto. I've got my nippers. I've got some base stick glue. And something else I want to show you, Mary Ellen's Best Press. This is great. It's a clear starch when you're squirting your fabric and ironing it to get out the stubborn creases. And this smells so good because it has the linen fresh scent. And it doesn't leave the starch, white starch marks that flakes off. So I've got my machine threaded and we're ready to go. I'll be sewing a quarter inch. Now for every one of these, you're going to need, this is an eight and a half. And for every one of these, you're going to need four, four and a half. So the first thing you're going to do is fold this together wrong sides. And we'll give it a little finger press. You're going to put one on the raw edge of the corner here. And you're going to have an overhang of a quarter inch at the fold. Then this one is going to go face down. Just like this. Uh, I'm not a pinner, but in this case, I'm going to pin one at the top and one at the bottom. And then you're going to repeat this on this side. Get that corner up there. This one is face up. So you're putting, in this case, the right side is the brighter side. Can you see a difference? And we want the bright side to be the right side today. And yes, my hands are clean. I've scrubbed them and scrubbed them, but they are just stained from all the painting and the resin work that I've been doing. So I'm going to pin one more and then I will show you how I do chain stitching. Normally I would pin every single one of these, but just for the sake of the video, I'm going to show you how I do chain stitching with just two. And then once I get all of these sewn, we will come back and I will show you the next step. See how some of these have still have little faint creases? It's okay. By the time you get this sewn and quilted, you're never going to even know. And washed, of course. That's going to... I did not pre-wash my fabric. The reason being is that I, when I make a quilt, I like the effect that it gives when it comes out of the dryer. It has that old crinkly look. Now, if you want it to look pristine, pre-wash your fabric, and then it's ready to go to your recipient. 
So you can see why I don't like pinning. This is just painful. <laughs> it's painful. It hurts. Okay, now we're going to go over to the sewing machine. I've got my thread here. I'm going to show you something else. Beginners, beginning sewers always seem to have a problem. Well, not always, but they're, the majority of the problem is they're sewing along and they try to pull it out and there's this bird nest coming from underneath. 99% of the time, that reason is because the thread has slipped the disc tension discs in here. And in this case, my machine, you can't see it, but in the older machines, you can. So you can actually be assured that it's going in the tension disc. But if you can see this, my thread's okay. It's pulling okay. Now I'm going to drop the, the feed dogs. Uh, not drop the feed dogs. I'm going to drop the presser foot. And now I'm going to try to pull. It's much harder. See, my, my whole thing is shifting. This is a beginner. I'm going to put this down. Lower my presser foot. And I'm going to sew, you know, pretty close to the edge. All right. This has a lot of bells and whistles. I have it set so my presser foot automatically comes up. And the needle stays down. And you're ready to put your next piece in for chain stitching or turning a corner for pivoting. I like that. So now I'm going to put this and I'm going to butt it right up against there. And when you're sewing for quilting, you don't need to do back stitching. So I'm going to stitch a few inches or a few stitches. My stitch length is at 2.5. You never want to sew over a needle. And the reason being is that needle can, your sewing needle can hit your straight pin and shove it down in and jam it and break your needle. Um, it's a pain to get it out if it gets, if anything gets jammed in there. And if your needle breaks and the needle drops down into the mechanism below, you've got to find it. So it's just better to be safe than sorry, as far as I'm concerned. All right, so now let's say I've done all of my chain stitching. Now I'm going to take off my beginner, or if I have two of these, I have a beginner and now I have an ender. So I'm just going to run this on here like that. And now we're ready to sew the other side. One of the more exceptional needles that I prefer to use, and that is a superior. I'm using a top stitch uh, because I wanted the size 12 for in America and terminology. 80 is what they look at in Europe. I don't exactly know what they mean, but I know that if I have an 11, it's going to be smaller than this. 14 is going to be larger, 16 larger, 18 is for like denims and leather, that kind of thing. But this is pricey, but they last forever. They are amazing needles, um, but you do still have to be gentle when you're sewing. You don't want to you know, yank on something and bend bend your needle out of shape. So let's come back over to the cutting mat. All right. You're gonna have, now you're gonna have a long piece with a fold at the bottom and two flanges hanging out on either side. And now to finish this block, you're gonna open this up so that this lays flat. That's gonna lay flat. And you're going to take your seam and you're going to nest them. And nesting means to push the seam allowance one direction and then on the, this one, 
the seam allowance in the opposite direction and you're going to just wiggle that until it sits exactly where you want it and then I'm going to give it a pin and I'm going to come in at an angle so I'm going to come in well I'm going to try to come in there we go and I'm going to catch that seam allowance and bring the needle back up through the top okay just like that and now we've got this little pucker going on so you want to get this flattened out bring this up whoops you want a quarter inch hanging out over the edge so this square isn't four and a half inches, 18, one, two, three, four and a quarter. Wow, that, I just measured it. It's only four and a quarter. So I cut some of these wrong, dang it. One, two, three, four and a quarter. So I'll have to rip that one out. So let's look at the other one. Where did it go? Okay, that's four and a half. And four, almost four and a half. So this one should be okay. So let's do that again. So that other one is going to go in my ripping pile. Stick it. Ouch. <laughs> I, just, I just stabbed on my on right under my fingernail. That hurt. Okay, this one's good. I think I got my quarter inch of seam allowance here. Pin it. And now we need to straighten this part out on this side. And I got this is a little bit over. This one is going to be a real shallow quarter inch. See that? And that's okay as long as you know that. Quilting is very forgiving. Okay, so let's sew this across. We want to get this pulled back. See how that made a little pleat? We're going to pull that back flat. And we're going to sew a quarter inch. Now we will just adjust as we go. So I'm going to head for the needle. And with that pin being in it like that, it's going to hold that bottom seam allowance forward. And now we want this to come back over this way. Make sure that there's no pleat in that when you sew. Line your fabrics up. And start sewing. Oh, wait, when you stop sewing, it's really good. When you stop sewing and quilting, it's really good to leave your needle in the down position. So if your machine has that capability, set that and leave it alone. Just always leave your needle in the down position. So now we'll open this up. See how that one is going to be short right there? That's okay because when you sew it, you're still going to sew right there and you'll just have that short out seam allowance <laughs> it'll be more like an eighth I got it on this side too okay so now we're going to get these all flattened we're going to make it go into a reverse like a it's going to look like a pinwheel and right here in the center we're going to open that up So that it will lay flat. I'll bring that up close. See how I did that? 
you got all of this going this way, all of this going this way, all that that way, and that way. So I'm going to take it over to my machine or my ironing board, and I'm going to give this a press really quick. So there you go. There's that black. Almost finished. So I'll do the rest of these, and we will come back and end up uh, pinning things to the design wall so we can add our colors. Actually, what I'll do is I'll sew them all together so that the top is that kind of finished. And then we will add this where we want the colors to go. So we'll see you then. One thing I wanted to show you, and I, I wanted to mention, if you're a new sewer, you're, you have a tendency to watch the needle, and you don't want to do that. You want to watch where your edge of your fabric is sitting at all times. So I'm, I'm going to keep my eye right here. Let's see if we can get in closer here. I'm going to lay my fabric right along the edge of my presser foot, and I'm going to push that down so you can see it's going to be right there. This is a scant quarter inch. That's how I normally sew when I quilt. So I'm going to keep my eye right here at the front of the foot and the fabric. Keeping my eye right here all the time. I'm not even watching the needle because the needle will follow where I guide the fabric. And if you want to use a stiletto, this is how you use it. it it's basically a pin and you push it down onto the surface. And you let it move with the fabric as you're sewing. But I'm still keeping an eye right there at the front of the presser foot. Let me do one more. I've got my 20 blocks all sewn. And the beauty of this block is that uh, if you sewed, if you pinned it the way I showed you, and you uh, pin it any way you want, it just make it consistently the same for everyone. Because it doesn't matter how you turn this block, this is always going to face up. When you lay it against this one, it's always going to be facing down. So that's another beautiful thing. So now we're going to try to nest this. And what I like to do here is poke the pin. You want to poke the pin <laughs> right at the tip of this point. And now you want to come here and pin it right there. And I'm going to match my corners. And if you want to pin, you're more than welcome to pin. And I want to show you something here. On the other side, see how that's off about an, about an eighth of an inch? It's okay, because you're going to, when you sew your quarter inch, you're going to start at a quarter inch up here. Here, let me just show you. I zoomed in a little bit. Hopefully I don't get blurry. Okay, now I'm going to watch right here i'm going to sew a quarter inch I'm not going to do any back stitching because every one of these seams will get caught in another seam so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to eyeball and aim for the point of where this pin is inserted and when i get up there you'll see what i'm talking about so I'm going to just go slow and I'm not looking at my needle. I'm looking here and I'm trying to eyeball it right straight through the middle of my foot. So I'm looking at the pin, looking at the pin. Stiletto comes in handy here. Okay, now I'm in the home stretch, and now I'm going to aim for my quarter inch right down here. So 
So here's my seam. We're going to open it up. And you see how I missed that pointy bit? So we're going to do it again. That's almost an almost an eighth of an inch just on one side. So we're going to do this again. And you can sew over your seams. It's I mean, you don't want to do it three or four times because then you're going to add a whole lot of bulk. So now I know that I've got to come to the left of this starting right about here. And I'm going to start aiming for my pin. Okay, let's check it again. We're still off by, oh, I'm sorry. Let me zoom out. Oh, I'm zooming in. Still off, but I'm gonna accept that. All right, so my battery died while I was ironing the blocks and I've got two piles here there's five one two three four five and then this one is five so now what we're going to do is we want to pin right at the very tip of this point and right at the very tip of this point And I was going to mention yesterday, because this is a day later, I was going to mention the reason why these pins don't want to go through this fabric very well is because it is got paint on it. It's a tone on tone fabric. So sometimes it's hard to get the pin through that, especially when you're working with more than one layer. And then we're going to pull that out, get that pin right, right at the point. Pinch it together, get that, make sure that seam is nested. Straighten up the blocks a little bit. And like I said before, see how I'm coming clear down here? Yet this is about an eighth of an inch off. You're still going to be sewing about a quarter of an inch, so it's okay. Okay, we're ready to sew. You can pin the ends if you want. I'm not going to. I'm just going to line them up and hold it down with my finger. This is called finger pinning. I'm going to start with a quarter inch. So a few stitches. And now what I'm going to do is aim imaginary straight line. I have a kind of like a, a radar beam. I'll turn it on. Can you see? As you notice, I had this imaginary line and then I just turned on my radar beam. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's a guide. It's a laser guide. And I'm almost there. So I'm going to just shift it just a, a tiny bit. And now I'm going to sew. Aim for the, the this part right here so that my needle will come down right there. You see how this is off just by hair? 
I'm going to bring this up to that point and I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to pull at the same time and I'm going to keep some tension on this as I sew. Fabric has just a little give. So when you're sewing like that, you can ease in that extra fabric. It's just like sewing garments. When you have to ease in a sleeve, that's all you're doing. And if it's, you know, like an eighth of an inch or so, it's fine. I'm going to turn that beam off because that it can be helpful at times, but I don't want you to think that you need that because you don't. I've been sewing this block. Well, I've been sewing for nearly 50 years without it. It's very helpful. And if you've got the, the money to buy a, a new machine like this, go for it. The bells and whistles on this machine are amazing. I wish I could be a representative for Baby Lock. <laughs> I would be their ambassador. Ooh, I should contact them and see if they'll sponsor me. I doubt it. They've got their own channel. Now we're going to snip these apart and we're going to iron them. I won't show you that. We're just going to iron them all in the same direction. Because this, in this case, these are, uh, there's no direction. I could flip it one way or the other. So let me iron these really quick. I ironed this one to the left. This is my seam allowance, sewing the two blocks together. And I ironed this one to the left. So this seam allowance here is going to get ironed to the left. So that's what you're going to do. Make sure that if these... If this one is to the left, that one has to be to the left. This one has to be to the left. Okay, I backed up a little bit so that um, I can show you, a, a, hopefully, a good view. So I've got five rows now. And now I'm going to start sewing them together. And I'm so I'm going to flip this one upside down. And we're going to look at the seam allowance. And they're, see how it, they're both going the same direction? We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over. And now these are going in opposite directions. Everything will sew just fine. So I'm going to pin at each intersection. So now that I've got that, uh, let me bring you back down. Well, I thought I was recording. I'm going to do this again. I this is the one where I sewed way off on one side, but I was at the point on this side. And I thought, okay, I better show you how to fix that because you don't want to just take a deeper bite in this case. You want to rip the seam back and if you'll if I put if I put a pin right in my seam allowance where I sewed it and then put a pin in the other one. You'll see my fabric is off. So I think that was the culprit. Okay, so then you'll just come back here to the intersection about an inch beyond. So to an inch beyond where you started ripping and that seam will be good. I was finding it a little difficult to sew more than two pieces together. My arms and my hands were starting to hurt. I've got arthritis in them so I have, this is not a true quilting glove, but it's got rubber. I got them in the hardware section. Was, they were cheaper, but it helps guide the fabric much easier. Whew, sewed over that needle. But I just wanted to show you and share that tip. All right. So... Now I will see you at the design wall. Hi guys! I've got the quilt on the wall and I've laid it horizontal so that it's easier to record. And I've got my fabrics here. My daughter wanted me to... We did a FaceTime. 
and we went shopping through my cabinets and we picked out all of these pretty colors. So I got a mixture of batiks and prints. So I'm just going to start laying some colors out and I'll just stick a pin in it. I've only got 20 slots, so I'm just going to throw them on here. And then I'll come back and take a look at it, see what we need to switch around. That's too pale. I don't like that one. I like batiks. They're so, they're so organic. Now, if your fabric is directional, you'll want to pay attention to that. I hope you can hear me okay. Oh, we got some polka dots. I didn't want that there because I already have one here. So let's see. I got two pinks. Got one of those. I might be able to do three of each. Okay, I've got three pinks and then three of those. One, two, three, one. Do another pokey dot. These are four and a half inch square. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go step back and look at it from far away and see if there are too many pinks together, too many purples together, too many blues, and then we'll try to do some shifting. This process for a baby quilt, I can probably get done in an evening, but if I was doing a queen or a king size, which I've done before, I've had the, them hanging on this wall for three months. So don't rush it. Do it. Walk away. Every time you walk by, take a look at it and see if anything stands out to you. That's my method. Now, if you have a different method, by all means, go with it. If it works for you, that's great. So I'm going to take a step back. Okay, seeing that this is horizontal and it's going to be this way when it lays in the crib, I'm going to turn these blocks. Okay, take another step back and see if I... Oh, find anything else I don't care for. I want this to be random. Okay, I, I feel like there's too much of this going on. So I'm going to take away this purple. Put that one there, and then I'm going to put this one here. And I'll take another step back. I'm thinking that I like that. And I'm looking at it through the screen. I like that. I think that's good. Okay. So this is it for part one. I hope you guys come back and visit me on part two, where I will take you off my design wall and over to my giant ironing table that my husband built. I had to draw it up and make all the cubby holes for the, the things that I needed to put away in there, and he built it for me. And I'll show you that when we get to that point. But... I'm excited! Next thing we're going to do is we'll put it on the ironing board. We will put a backing, batting, lay this out and get it all pinned. And then we'll take it to the sewing machine and quilt it. And then I will show you a really cool technique for binding without having to make binding and sewing it and turning it. It'll be fun. You're going to love it. I love it! Like subscribe and share if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. That would be very helpful to my channel. So see you next time. Thanks. Love you. Bye-bye.